cabins and yurts. So here's my cabins and yurts section. So this is gonna be called cabins and yurts instead of what it is now. Cabins and yurts. And then this will be reserving a cabin or yurt. Reserving a cabin or yurt. Of course you can copy and paste and that's fine. So this thing has a formatting very similar to this. So I'm actually gonna just bring, I'm gonna leave that down there, I guess. And I'm gonna bring this up and I'm gonna start working on pasting this stuff in. So I've got a little paragraph here. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in, copy that. And I'm gonna put a new, so this is an H2 right here. See the H2? I need an H3 that's left aligned for this cabin yurt reservations here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to this area. I'm gonna drop a heading in right there. I'm gonna call it an H3. The size is gonna be like medium, I guess. This is gonna be cabin yurt reservations, if I can spell. And then style, the red's good. I think I want this to be heavier weight, like 800, which is what the headline is there. And the only thing I need to do is tighten this up just a bit because I feel like it's a little bit too far away. So we're gonna go ahead and margin that up just a skosh, like maybe minus five or something, maybe minus 10. 10. There we go. And then we just need to start putting these things in. So now go back to content and this instead of value, we value men in there. Oh, I got to put this paragraph in. We'll use this one because that's, that's a paragraph anyway. Paste. So there is our paragraph and then I'm going to go ahead and start working on this. Boy, that's got a lot of padding. Let's see. Paragraph. Let's do this. Top 10 minus bottom update. Copy this, the ink, and that, and then we're going to do this one, which is going to be this right here, and you can just kind of see how this is going to go. I mean, it's really not going to be too bad. Obviously, if you were entering all this data for the first time, it might be a little rough because you'd be typing all this out by hand, but I am not doing that in this case. I'm just converting stuff over to this new site. And then to request a cabin or yurt. So I'm going to delete the others here. So we're going to kill off those two. And update. And then I'm going to refresh because they're still showing stuff here. So it needs to be updated so that I can remember what it's supposed to be doing here. And I'm gonna just delete this because we don't need it. Delete. And then we're gonna be kind of copying this again. So I'm gonna duplicate it. I'll bring it down underneath that. I'm gonna duplicate this. Actually, we don't have a subhead again, which is a little weird. Maybe I'll put one in. To request your cabin or your simply send. Well, maybe I'll leave it alone. Delete. So to request a cabin or yurt, simply send the following information. Update. 
And then these will go copy, paste. And see how this kind of pops in? So I could do that again if I needed to. And maybe I will just add more padding in there. But let's see how this looks when I get it all done. Copy. Come on. Paste. Then we'll do this one. Copy. Paste. And then we'll do this one. Copy. Paste. Update. And then we have these two subheads here. And I think what I'm going to do is just duplicate this again. And this time, I'm going to change the little icon from a square to... Um, Circle, house, I was thinking it was a yurt, so, ten TP, no, that's not a thing, um, <laughs> it was worth a shot, um, bullet, dot, dot circle, sure, let's do that, let's do a dot circle which means we're going to kill off these others because we're going to be using the same thing again. And there's two of them. So we'll use this one. Each cabin can accommodate 11 men. And then this one will be this. Paste. Update. And then the one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some padding to the left so that it pops over to the right a bit. So I'm going to do 25 pixels of padding to bring it over kind of in line here. Maybe 20 instead of 25. See what that looks like. Nope. 22. That looks good. Update. And then send your check to. So I need another paragraph here. So I'm going to do just text editor, drop that right there. And then this is where I'm gonna put this contact info, paste. I'll paste it right there. Now it's all wackadoodle. So let's see, it's pasting in a bunch of the details from there. So we're gonna not do that. We're gonna paste it right here. Men's Roundup Camp Cabin Reservation. Camp to add more. Dowell Creek Road and that and we're gonna go ahead and visual style is gonna be centered I actually kinda wanna have this cabin reservation be bold so I think what I'm gonna do is highlight that and bold it uh, oops cabin reservation bold there we go and then the other thing to note is see how this um, reservation how it was popping down on here it's going to do that when you go to mobile probably too let's see what that looks like so that looks good let's go to mobile let's see what happens yeah reservations dropping down see i'd write I'd, I'd rather have it say men's roundup cabin reservation so the way you can get around that is by adding a non-breaking space right here and a non-breaking space is and n b s p semicolon non-breaking space and you can look that up by just going non-breaking space HTML and then you'll see uh, one of these pages I think it might be in here yeah and NBSP semicolon so you can look those kinds of little tidbits up that way when you come back to the visual you won't see it but if you update it what you'll see here is it will drop in there and then the one thing you do want to be aware of is when you do make that type of a change then you need to make sure that there's actually like an actual line break right there so that it doesn't um, do weird stuff and stack weird 
So then you just have to check it out. So let's go to tablet again, desktop, and update. And then we've got cabin and yurt drawing, which is gonna have the same structure as this part up here. So we're gonna then just copy this again. So we're gonna duplicate it, bring it back down. We're gonna take this little subhead paragraph. We don't need that yet. Let's do this one, duplicate. Bring it down. It's a little too tight now because I added all that tightness up above. So we're going to make this 10 instead of 20. We get it back to kind of similar spacing to what I've got up above. Maybe even 15 or 5. Let's make it 5. 5. That looks good. So then we're gonna add this back in. Anyway, you can see how this goes. Obviously, you do not need to watch me do every single line on this page. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. And then when I get to the end of this page, I will show you how it looks when it's complete. One thing I did wanna show you here is see how it says credit cards are not accepted in bold. And then we got letters, we got received, we got some other stuff like that. So letters and received are part of this para or part of this um, paragraph text here, and so you can style it right here. But when you're in one of these list type elements, like where I am here with the credit cards not accepted, the only way to make that look bold, so we have to say the whole thing, credit cards not accepted. So you're gonna do strong, and then in order to make it stop, you're gonna have to say forward slash strong. That's kind of the universal start and stop. The forward slash is at the end and the, the no forward slash is at the front with the brackets in there and that's how you make, and, that, and that's again, that's just HTML. So you're like HTML, um, how to bold. And then you can go into W3 formatting um, and these are the types of things. We've got like uh, strong, which is what I just used, important text, italicized. These are kind of universal things and you can put those into those elements in Elementor in order to style things a little bit more uniquely inside of these little widgets. So that is a tip for you right there, which is pretty cool. Something you can do pretty easily to kind of further style what you're doing. Okay, one more thing here. So one of the things we've got on the page right now is we've got a click to call phone number and we've got a click to email for our uh, registrar. So this phone number, if you're on a mobile device, your mobile device will automatically pick up that this is a phone number and will allow you to make a call on it. But in, in the Elementor system here, there's a link option and you can click on it and it will give you a domain name like an HTTPS or HTTP option. Um, but if you wanna do other, other types of styling in here, you can also take a look at stuff. So there's, there's more link options within here. So you can do a URL or you can link to individual pages. There's just all kinds of things you can do. I'm not gonna make this a link anymore because like I said, most most uh, modern systems are gonna automatically pick up that that's actually a link. But here is gonna be an email link. So this is a little different. So this is gonna be an email link. And an email link looks different to HTML. So like, let's do this, email link, HTML, and it's gonna say mail to. So uh, let's do this, W3C schools. So mail to, colon, and the website, at the email address, and then that. So we're gonna use the mail to, um, domain name essentially. So the, this is gonna be mail to colon her email address and email her. We're not gonna open in a new tab because it's automatically gonna open in their email anyway. And then we're gonna update it. 
The one thing I do want to do, I think, is make this underlined so that it's real obvious that it's a that it's a link. So we're gonna email, we're gonna update it like that. So now it's gonna show as a link. So we'll do that. And that is that is something you should definitely do from like a usability standpoint and accessibility standpoint is to always underline links unless you're from a style standpoint, uh, you know, a, afraid of it or worried about it or something like that. Because if there's a whole bunch of links next to each other, it can be a little bit distracting seeing a million different links. All right, so I am doing a costs page here. And I just came to a point where I, they're talking about the offering project, which has to do with the, uh, the basically adding an industrial kitchen um, upgrade. And so I thought I'd put a photo in here. So I just wanted to show you how a photo was added because I have not done that actually yet. So you can add an image like this. You can just place it wherever. Um, and, and what that'll do is it'll give you a full width image because that's this container that I'm working in is full width, but that's going to be really, really, really big. And I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is create an intersection here. And what an intersection is going to do is it's going to allow me to do half width or I can make it one third width or whatever I want to do. I'm probably going to make it like 33%. And then I'm going to take this copy that I have here and I'm going to toss it in that right side. So I've got the copy on the right. I'm going to put the image on the left. If you just hit the plus there, it'll give you the options again on the left. Then you can drag your image in and then you can click on there to choose the image from your media library if you've already got some stuff in there. And I'm not sure that one of these really fits the bill specifically but maybe I'll pick this one for now and I'll just insert that in there just so that I have something. Um, probably gonna pull some stuff out of Facebook because we have a lot of old images in here and I'm sure that I have something somewhere about cooking in the kitchen. So I'll just have to look through these images later. But anyway, that is how you easily do I thought that was an interior shot, but I guess it's not. So that is how you do an adding of an image into a page. So real super simple. And then if I decided I wanted to move it to the right, I just literally drag and drop it. It's very cool. And then you can look at it on tablet mode. And this image is obviously roughly square. And so see this right here, this large medium and such. So if I make this full and essentially then it'll then it'll scale up. So then if I go to mobile, it's now going to drop down below the uh, the copy. This has got a pretty wide gutter, so I'm going to probably reduce this on mobile because it's too much gutter here on the side and it makes the type really narrow. But anyway, I wanted to show you how to do that image and then also if you wanted to move the image up above, then you can click on this right here. And in advanced, there's a responsive button and you can reverse columns on mobile. And then what that does is it just literally flip flops left to right on mobile. So that way it'll be offering project image and then copy, which is probably a better way to do it. So that is how you do a mobile Im or do an image and add in into uh, Elementor. So this is another situation that I've got here. So I want to use this image up here, but obviously because of the fact that some of these guys are wearing white or this guy's bald or there's just a lot of blown out color right here because of the lighting, it's not really ideal for the, the text. So you can add shadows to the text. So there's a lot of ways you can get around this kind of stuff. So we can select the text and then go into style, text shadow, and then you can change the color of the shadow. You can darken it, lighten it. You can see me doing that right there. You got I me. Mean, you could change it to red if that was going to help. Obviously, it's not in this case, but you can do that. Or there's another option here, which is maybe a better option in this case, which is to hold down or you click on this edit section up here, and here's your image, and go go down to background overlay, and then you can select a color. In this case, I'll just take the black 
and then see what I've got there. I've got a 50% black overlay. I don't want to go that dense, but I'm going to back it down to around 20, 21%, maybe 25%. So then I've got enough contrast to be able to easily see the text. I'll go ahead and update that and see what that looks like. Looks like we're in good shape. So that is, that is a couple little quick tips to make your copy a little bit more readable. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the drop shadow on there because I don't think it's a bad thing in this case. Makes it just more readable and that's not a bad thing. And uh, on mobile, even e just as easy. So yeah, that's good strategy. So yeah, that is a good solution for a problem like that. Most of my other pages have plenty of density, plenty of darkness, so I have nice contrast on the copy, but just on this page, it was a problem. So I used the overlay. All right, so this is a brand new page called Tents and RVs. I have not started it yet, and I just wanted to show you how quick and easy it is to build an entire page using Elementor with the template that you previously have used. So I'm gonna go back to Cabins and Yurts, which is the last page that I did. There's not much here except for just a little bit of copy in this big image. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Edit with Elementor. Now you can, if you want, as soon as this loads, you can just copy individual elements at a time. You can like right click on this, copy, and then go in here. Once I hit edit with Elementor. And in the dotted line section, this widget area, you could say paste and it would paste it in there and you can go piece by piece. But a better way to do it is if you've built a page that you like and it's got all the stuff on it that you think you're gonna need for your next page, down here in the save option, there's a little little up arrow right here. You click on that and there's an option to save as a template. Now I've already done that on another page, so I'm not gonna do it here, but I just wanted to show you where it was. And so I go in here and instead of creating a new, a new structure and starting all over from scratch, you can go into here. And this of course is the pre-built stuff that's part of the pro package. And of course, I've already shown you this and these are the blocks, but in here is my templates. So I've got inside page. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert that along with the document settings because I want it to be all the same as the other pages. And it pastes in vision and values along with all of the assets and copy. So then all I need to do now is just individually change out these images I'm going to use this shot right here. Insert media. So we got tents, we got RVs, we got a whole bunch of people camping. This is going to be changed to. We need to find tents and RVs in here also. Cabin or yurt. Food. CPAP and metal. Camping space. Here we go. Tents and RVs. Finding a camping space. Go ahead and just copy this. And go ahead and paste it into this pay this section right here. I think. Get rid of this extra space here. And always put a non-breaking space, NBSP and semicolon at the end of all your paragraphs, the last word between the second and the second to the last and the last and NBSP. Just so you don't have any hangout sort of weirdo words just hanging out by themselves on mobile or whatever. Put that in there. Finding a camping space should actually be, that should be removed. So that is the first paragraph. And then we've got RV spaces and electrical outlets. So RV spaces and electrical outlets. Maybe I'll use an ampersand there like we did before just to keep the size down a little bit in terms of length. Then I need another paragraph. So I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna just duplicate that and move it down right to there. And I'm gonna copy this 
Just that. Copy. Do the same thing here. Paste. Go in here and NBSP. I just wanted to show you what it's like to build one page so you get an idea of how quick you can do it once you understand how to do what I'm doing here. Copy. Paste. And obviously it'll be, you know, slower if you're having to write all the content yourself and type everything in. But you can see how quick it could be if you had all the copy, say, sitting in a Word doc where you could just paste it right in. There we go. Paste. This one, copy, paste, and then we're going to need another one. So I'm going to create a new one. This is a long one. Copy and paste. Now, one thing to note, as I said with the non-breaking spaces, that this this software, these these things here, will also create widows in a given way depending on the width of the screen you may actually end up with staff sitting all on its own which doesn't look very good so what you can do to solve that problem is literally just use the uh, arrow keys to get all the way to the end of the line here I realize this is a long one so it's not really ideal but you just back back up to between the last two words there between parking and areas hit the backspace and NBSP semicolon and just do that with all of these so that you don't have any single words hanging out on their own lines. It just doesn't look good. And NBSP and so on. Just do that everywhere and just be consistent with it because generally speaking, you always want to not have more than, you don't want to have one word sitting on its own. And so just go ahead and just make a habit of always doing that anytime you're working in Elementor or any, oh wait a second, so I've got two here, oh no, it just, no water or sewer, I think it's having a bit of a fit here, I'm going to update this and re hit refresh, because I'm seeing the same copy inside the, inside the editing piece. Let's see what it really says. No sewer or sewer. So I'll click on that. So I was on no water or sewer, which is this one. No water or sewer. Okay, I did that. So then we'll do this one. Which is going to say no sewer. So we're going to say no. And NBSP semicolon and then this one which is for staff okay. so now we have a completed page now another thing here see this tense we're pretty hard to read that I think we can all agree so I'm going to go ahead and add a drop shadow to that type in hopes that that will be enough. If it's not, I'm going to go ahead and add an overlay to this image to darken it ever so slightly. And rather than doing it in like Photoshop and then re-importing the image, which is an option, there's an easier way to do it. And I'll show you that in just a moment if it's needed. So we're going to go ahead and add a drop shadow here and then we're going to scroll probably change the width of the screen here so we can see if that did it. So that's pretty good, but let's do the other method so that you can see how that's done. So you click on this up here, which allows you to style this stuff, this image, and here's the image right here. So you scroll down a bit to background overlay and your background type is classic in this case and the color is black 
going to pick black because that's the one I want to overlay with. And then it comes in with a 50% opacity, but I'm going to dial that back to like, I don't know, 15%. It doesn't need much to be right. So we'll do that. And then we're going to view the page, the completed page. So there is our completed page. Plenty of contrast there. I've got a drop shadow on the type and I've got an overlay on the image. But I think it works well. And you can see what it looks like as it scales down in size. There's a non there's a non-breaking space spot that I need to put in right there in that headline. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back in. So find a camping space. So we click on this headline. And right here, we're going to put end NBSP, semicolon. Let's do this one too because it hasn't been done. And update. And then we'll look at that. So let's see what happens when we see how electrical outlets stays tied together and camping space stays tied together. I have a feeling though, that electrical outlets is too long of a word. Electrical being the long word, obviously. And so we're gonna look at what that looks like on tablet. It stays all one up and on mobile. Yeah, that's, see, that's the problem. So there's there are times when you have to just give up on having non-breaking spaces when there's real long words because it's gonna force a wrap, which you don't want. So I'm going to just leave that one alone, and it is what it is. So that is a completed page using a template and some of the tools in Elementor. Pretty dang quick. So on this page, I've got a very long list I'm going to be using. Here's the long list so you can see it. It's pretty long. I don't know that I want to stack it all in one single column. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create an inside section and an intersection right here. And then in that intersection, I'm going to put this bulleted list, icon list, and I'm going to just have two stacks. And it's going to get as long as it's going to get, but it, it's going to allow me to kind of maintain a little bit more structure on this page so that it doesn't get so long and so there isn't a huge void on the right hand side which I don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and start copying these items and putting them in here for this particular page and since again I'm going to try to and NBSP and go put the non-breaking spaces in there while I'm at it just to speed up the process for at the end here. Hiking trails. Probably doesn't even need one because it's so short. So I'm not going to worry about it. Skeet shooting. Offsite. Okay. Okay, update. So that is, there's something to do for everyone. See what that looks like. So once it breaks to mobile Devices drops to a single stack with a little bit of extra space in between, which is a little bit annoying. Wonder if I should tighten that up. Oh, see, recreation field there is wrapping. So I need to add a non breaking space there. So, recreation field, night soccer in the rec field. Soccer tournament on the recreation and the BSP update. 
This will show us what it'll look like on tablet and on mobile. Yeah, this extra space is a little frustrating on mobile. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up. 15, maybe on mobile. Let's see what that looks like. Maybe 20. That looks right. So this only targets the mobile device. See how it's got a little phone in there? So once I go back to tablet, that goes back away. And back to desktop, it's gone. But as soon as I go back to mobile, it pulls it up so that it's tight up there and looks right. So we'll go back to view page and see what it looks like. And then we can scale it back. See recreation field bump down. So now that recreation and field are staying tight together. And on mobile, it all looks perfect. So that is what I wanted. That is just exactly what I wanted. So once again, I've got a list of things here where I'm going to be using my bulleted list item, my icon list item. And I've got uh, bolded items throughout, all caps items, phone numbers and stuff in here, which because this is an FAQ. So I just want to show you how I'm going to style this so you can quick and understand that. And I believe I've shown this before, but just the same, I'm going to show you again just to show how it's done. So I'm going to copy this whole thing, go ahead and paste it in here. And then I'm going to add my non-breaking space to the end of this because it's pretty long. NBSP. Then I'm going to go to the beginning of this thing where there's that wristbands that I want to be capitalized. and Or, or bold, rather. And I'm going to hit... Um, the left uh, bracket strong that's going to bold the whole thing so if I do forward slash strong and end and then that what that's going to do is only going to bold the one part just like you saw there so that is just all I wanted to show you I'm going to do the rest of these no reason to watch all all of the times I do it the same thing just wanted to show you this here